morning, everyone, and welcome. Today's service is going to be led by the babies, the boys and girls, the Sunday school teachers, and a few dads as well. But before we hand over to them, just a couple of quick announcements. First of all, if you wish to give to Storehouse, you can do that on Monday morning from 10 to 11 a.m. at the main front doors of the church. Then secondly, you will have seen in a very excited way that things are moving in a very positive direction for us regarding the reopening of church. And so following announcements uh, this week, let me bring you up to date a bit on that. The First Minister and Deputy First Minister announced on Thursday that a provisional date for reopening of churches for services is Monday the 29th of June. Now, that's dependent on further discussions that are going to take place during this incoming week. But it is expected that at an announcement next Thursday, uh, the confirmation will be given that churches can begin to hold services again. Once we know more specific details about this, Kirk Session will meet to begin planning when and how we will reopen. The advice that has come to us from Church House just in the past couple of days is that we err on the side of caution and not feel under pressure to, to reopen straight away, but rather to get everything in place that we need so that uh, the reopening is a safe one, which of course is our responsibility. So there'll be more details for you in the coming weeks about that. Can I thank everyone who has taken part in our service today, especially the babies, the boys and girls, the Sunday school teachers and daddies, and a special mention to Ross Hamilton, Rachel McFarland and Nikki Agnew for collating all the video clips that you will see during the service. Can I also thank the Lockhart family for their musical input, it's fantastic, and also to Heather Lyle for writing the material for the service. And now Ellie Pollock is going to play and sing for us, Here I Am to Worship. This is a musical prayer as we come before God and worship him in this special service today.
to our boys and girls. Good morning, Valley Home Presbyterian Church. Welcome to Chosen Day. Yahoo! <laughs> Wherever you're watching from the world, we are so happy that you're here with us. And we want to especially wish little Olivia Wood a very, very happy second birthday. We all hope that you had a great day with Mummy and Daddy. Bye. This morning our theme is centred around the Parable of the Talents. It's a celebration of our wonderful boys and girls who have been so resilient over lockdown. But more importantly, it is a celebration of God's goodness and faithfulness to all of our families and those we love. 12 weeks of lockdown is a long time in the lives of our babies and toddlers. Let's take a look at some of their developmental milestones during the weeks since we have last been together. Let's celebrate healthy pregnancies too, despite all the challenges of medical appointments. We look forward to meeting all the new babies in the new year. Who's your brother? verse 22 says cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you he will never let the righteous be shaken when we did our rainbow challenge we read this verse first every week we know it really well now God has sustained us and he is going to keep on sustaining us because he always keeps his promises so we are going to begin our service by thanking him for all we have learnt over these weeks and declaring our continued trust in him and the promise in his word. During our first song, we are going to see once again all the rainbow promises and stories used in our lockdown services. You'll be surprised just how far they've reached.
Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 to 30, the parable of the talents. Again, it would be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received the five talents went at once and put the money to work and gained five more. So also the one with the two talents gained two more. But the man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you've entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with the two talents also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received the one talent came. Master, he said, I knew you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed? Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. For everyone who has will be given more and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. In the story, Jesus' disciples are urged to use the gifts that they have been given. We usually interpret this as abilities and talents to serve God without reservation and without fear of taking risks. If we are Christians, we need to remember this. We were reminded at the start of the service that we should cast our cares on God and he will take care of us. We read this many times in the Bible. What a protective and loving Heavenly Father we have. This gave us so much comfort, especially during lockdown when there was so much fear and confusion at times. Yet later on in the Bible we find this stirring story. What can it mean for us all? Let's pause for a moment and take a look at some of our boys and girls and see what we can learn from them about this story. We asked them to send pictures of some of the ways that they've been developing their talents, learning new skills and some of the challenges that they've had to overcome over lockdown. We're so proud of them and their amazing parents. Um, there was no more school, but how, but why, who made this real? I miss my friends and teachers too. Life isn't quite the same without you. Homeschooling is just okay. I take it day by day. No more sports day or P7 play. It's not fair. It had to end this way. Big school right now seems a little bit scary. It's the fear of the unknown that makes me feel wary. Little things go through my mind, hoping everyone I meet will be friendly and kind. I didn't get to say goodbye to my ballet home school. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do. Nobody wanted the coronavirus or things to be this way, but we just have to be positive and, t and be thankful for each day. A new chapter will begin for me. What school I will go to, we'll have to wait and see. Um, so, at first, it's 
really hard to get the ball in the hoop. But then once you get it in, it gets easier and easier. I can't. I still can't get it in when I'm when I'm like running. Well, but I can get it in on like. Can stand it. Yeah. been learning how to thread my sewing machine. I haven't been able to go to football or rugby or any of my favourite clubs. So my rugby coach has organised the COVID games to keep us all busy. Each week they set a different challenge and then we were awarded points. Last week was the final week after after the eight challenges, I had the most points, so I won the P5 prize. As well as the challenges being great fun, I also learnt new skills. Here is one of my favourite rugby challenges. Get set, go! Now balance it carefully. Good boy! I've learned how to needle felt. I've been needle felting loads of rainbows for my friends and family. Jumping off the pier. It was scary. Uh, well, once you get in, you're in. And you can't do anything about that. You just swim back to the bit. The steps and go ladder. Go jump in again. Hi, my name's Ross and this is what I mastered in lockdown. During lockdown, I have mastered kayaking on my own in Bellion Bay. I started off going with my dad, but then I had the confidence to go out on my own. I wear a life jacket and a wetsuit in case I fall in, but so far I managed to keep a flu. I, I love going out with my brother and it is lots of fun. One times one. Thank you. Two times two. Four. Three times three. Nine. Four times four. Sixteen. Five times five. Twenty-five. Six times six. Thirty-six. Seven times seven. Forty-nine. Eight times eight. Sixty-four. Nine times nine. Eighty-one. Ten times ten. Hundred. Eleven times eleven. Hundred twelve times twelve. We've been learning about Spanish and I know you have too because we did a Spanish song use and I want to show you about what we'll be doing in home learning. So first on this we have Paella, my favourite and as you can see it's not like one of the best ones because it has shrimps on it and I really like it. Second of all we have Tapas. I really want to try it. It looks like cheese, ham, and other ones on it. And it looks really cool, and I really want to try it. Second of all, and third of all, we have chorizo. I've really never, I've tried it a couple of times because it goes in paella. It's just a bigger sausage, and it just doesn't look like a really good sausage, but it goes in paella. And that's what I've been learning about for home learning. Often I, I learnt how to bake lots of um, buns and cakes. boys and girls. Now bear with me, the reading I have here is going to be a little bit longer than the ones I've done in the past, so uh, just uh, bear with me. It'll take a few minutes, but it's well worth listening to. When we truly understand how much blessing God's invested into our lives, we're able to step out knowing he'll be with us. Now God doesn't just provide us with protection and give us all we need 
and ask us to trust him with our lives only for us to just turn around and keep all these amazing gifts for ourselves. He's making the way for us to then take risks on the investment he's made in us. Imagine that your mum is the one doing all the shopping this week and she gets lots of delicious ingredients to make lots of different dishes. Maybe she's going to make some tray bakes or cakes as well. I know I've been doing that quite a bit over the lockdown. But what would be the point of investing all that time and money, I suppose, in those lovely ingredients? What if they just sat in the cupboard? There'd be no point. She doesn't just leave them in the cupboard. She would use them and maybe you'd even help her. You'd then make something delicious using those ingredients. So if you like, you could say your mother is investing in those ingredients. And it might just not, it might not just be for you. It could be for friends, it could be for neighbours as well. I know that certainly we've been doing that. I myself had made some tray bakes and then I took some next door to the Lyles. And whenever they've been making stuff, they've been bringing stuff around for us as well. So we've all been sharing it out together. Another good thing to think about is it's not just sharing with your neighbours. Maybe you're sharing it with the storehouse basket for people who really do actually need this. Does that make sense? Whenever we're investing in something, we use our skills and we take a risk. For example, if for sake of argument, I made a set of tray bakes, I could take the risk and say, oh, I think my neighbours might like some of this. So I take the risk and I take some round to them. And I make good on the investment that I've made. So now that we understand that, what could God be saying to us? During lockdown, we've had the chance, if we've taken it, to learn a lot more about God. His word, if you like, has been invested in us. So the question is, how do we make good on God's investment in us? Why don't you actually continue that discussion with your families around the dinner table today? Think about how we apply God's word into our decisions. Like just what we do when we're choosing ingredients. How do we let God's word shape how we spend our time? If we get the ingredients, are we just making a quick snack? Or are we making a delicious dish that's going to take time to marinate? Another very important question is who do we share this with? With our neighbours and our friends perhaps? Now, boys and girls, as many of you I'm sure do know by now, we actually live next door to the Lyles. My mum and Heather have been very, very busy during the lockdown with baking, keeping everyone well fed. Heather's been making some soup and cakes, and of course Kim and Zoe have certainly enjoyed helping with that and helping to devour those. My mum, on the other hand, has been making some pancakes, and I myself have been making some Malteser buns, as well as some 15s. And naturally, of course, we want to share those with each other. The main reason, we've been, the main way we've been doing that is just leaving little surprises on each other's doorsteps. It's just generally good fun, it's something nice to do, and it keeps everyone's moods up. But again, it's a way of us investing our time and the ingredients, not just in ourselves, but in someone else. But that's just a basic example. We can go far beyond that. We're able to actually pray for each other and support each other by sharing encouragement from God's word. For example, if someone's feeling very down, if someone's had bad news or is feeling fearful or upset about what the future might bring, we're able to step in and encourage them using God's word. We're able to invest our time and the knowledge we've gained from the Bible to help them. We are neighbours, we are friends, we are brothers and sisters in the Lord. And like you've been getting to know each other's neighbours better, we're able to make new friendships along the way and share in new ways. Now that we have new opportunities, if we're willing to take the risk, we're able to share them and that includes sharing how much the Lord means to us. And that's one way we can understand the parable of the talents. So that gives you lots to chat about at lunchtime. Now, boys and girls, time to get on our feet, clap our hands, do some actions and dance to some of the songs that Taylor and Dwayne and their mum and dad, Jane and Gary, have recorded for us. Up we get! Bye. 
We've been exploring the different ways that we can talk to God through prayer. During lockdown, we've been leading the congregation in our rainbow prayers, as well as learning to pray on our own in quiet spaces in our home and using hand gestures. One of our favourite ways to pray is to frame the prayer around the letters S, T, O, P. And now the boys and girls from primary Sunday school are going to lead us in our prayers. Sorry if we haven't turned to you, Lord. Hey, Kim! <gasps> Sorry if we have been naughty. Sorry if I have thought of my brothers and sisters. Tears for thank you. Thank you, keep my faith and healthy. Thank you for all of our following. Thank you for all the key workers. Thank you for all the ways that we can stay in touch with our families. Thank you, God, for day of your success. Thank you for all food and drink. Thank you for the going to about us. It was for others. We pray for anyone who might be feeling sad. We pray that you, all the people that are sick, you will make them better. for everyone in our church family. We pray that you will keep all the key workers safe. <laughs> please replace. Please can we see when I go back to school? Please let Dr. Smile. 
find a cure for this virus. Please let me be able to play in play parks again. Please look after everyone we care about. We have a good summer of loads of ice cream. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. May his favour be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. Know that he is with you in the morning, in the evening, in your coming and your going, in your weeping and your rejoicing, always. Amen.